This is an electoral bond. This is an alphanumeric code. Wait, you can't see it. Can you see it now? This hidden alphanumeric code will reveal lots of skeletons in lots of closets because this code will help establish a direct link between the donor and the political party. But the fact that this hidden alphanumeric number even exists on the bond wasn't made public by the government until this woman found it out. Poonam, welcome back to the Quint. Thank you so much, Ishwar, for having me. It's like coming back to the family. Poonam, they're calling you the Bond girl now. <laughs> Dude, this was not expected. <laughs> Here in my hands are two electoral bonds issued by the State Bank of India. I gave rupees 2000 to SBI and bought two electoral bonds worth rupees 1000 each. So beware that your political donation is not actually anonymous. Award winning journalist Poonam Agarwal's investigation in 2018 forced the government to acknowledge the fact that a code like this even exists on an electoral bond. How did you go about the investigation in 2018 when you actually revealed the very existence of these codes? First of all, thank you Ishwar for having me here. I have worked here for almost six years with the Quint and I did this story uh, here itself, electoral bond in 2018. And uh, first of all, I would like to, um, you know, just thank all my editors who supported me in chasing and pursuing this story at that time. Of course, the first story that I filed at the Quint after talking to a few SBI officers, they said, no, nothing is there on the bond. It's no serial number. It's going to be kept anonymous. That's the ruling. And that's the scheme is all about. We purchased the bond. I went to the SBI office uh, branch in Parliament Street because that was the only branch which was selling it. And when I reached there, it was amazing. Like uh, the officer who was selling this, he first asked me a few questions. He was suspicious about me a bit, like how did I get to know about it? But then after a few queries, he said, okay, fine, we'll give you a KYC, which is Aadhaar card, PAN card number. I gave him the uh, details and then he made me fill a few forms and um, the check which was, uh, uh, I gave him a check to pay the bond because you cannot purchase it through cash. Once that was done, I was made to wait in the waiting room of the bank and he came back and he handed over the bond in an envelope. All it has is the date because apart from that, nothing is there. The date was required because the validity is for 15 days. So when you redeem it, how would the person know when, when it was purchased? So this is the purchase date. So then I went to Truth Lab, one of the labs in Delhi. They do the forensic test. Uh, of course, I had, you know, multiple questions, but I just didn't, still wanted to chase it a bit more. So when I went there, the truth was out that there is an alphanumeric number, which is unique and hidden and visible only under ultraviolet ray. It was a shocker. Fine, it's alphanumeric, it's hidden visible only under ultraviolet ray, but it's unique. How do you prove? So I purchased the second bond and the second bond clarified that it is, of course, it is a unique number and alphanumeric and hidden, which is visible only under ultraviolet rays. Till your investigation revealed it, nowhere in the government's press releases or the SOPs or the FAQs or the guidelines for purchasing electoral bonds was it mentioned that there is an alphanumeric code which is not visible to the naked eye. Absolutely. That was the thing. It was never mentioned. It was only after the story that the finance ministry came out with the statement and it is in public domain again. Uh, based on the story which was published uh, at the Quint in April, the finance ministry came out with a statement and they accepted that there is uh, there is an alphanumeric number. I'll just read it. I'll rather I have pulled that out and I've kept it with me. Uh, the release was on April 17, 2018. It is still there on the website. Uh, it is a three paragraph, but I'll read the re relevant one. The ministry said, the finance ministry, the electoral bonds have some built in security features to eliminate chances of forgery or presentation of a fake bond. These include a random serial number invisible to the naked eye. The number is not noted by the SBI in any record associated with buyer or political party depositing a particular electoral bond. So, this was the release where the finance minister for the first time 
told this in the public domain that there is one serial number which is unique. Prior to this, nobody knew it apart from the people in government. There was not anything in public domain in any of the press release in the scheme, nowhere it was mentioned that there is a hidden number. Now, we are in a stage where the Supreme Court has already asked the SBI to uh, share all the details related to bonds including the alphanumeric hidden number. So, now we are expecting that those numbers will be out in public domain soon just like the data of the purchaser and the political party is out. Poonam, tell the viewers what this alphanumeric code, once it is made public by the election commission, what will it establish? See, uh, if you remember in the court, the CJ asked the format of the, uh, you know, the numbers in which it is recorded. So, even there was some amount of, you know, lack of clarity, I would say still we do not know in what, which form are they going to give. But I can only say this much that if they give in this form, then we can match. That's something I can say. So, it will help match who bought the purchaser, the purchaser and the, and the political beneficiary, party. you can say. Political exactly party. with each other because this code is common between the two the, of them. Yeah, because one bond has only one number. So, it is a security feature that means it is being recorded which the SBI has already said. Now, when the bond is being sold, they need to keep a record that this bond has been sold. Otherwise, how will you know that this bond has been sold and it will be in cash somewhere. So, suppose I purchase a bond in Delhi, but I donate it to someone in Calcutta, some political party in Calcutta and they go to Calcutta branch to redeem it. So, the Calcutta branch needs to have the records of uh, Delhi uh, SBI, otherwise how will they tally? So, this is the only number which is common between you know the two branches. If we get a data with the court next to the purchaser's name and the data with the court next to the political party's name, then those can be tallied. That is the common link between the two. So, once we get that data in two parts, if at all it is in two parts, that is what they are going to share, then only it, the tally is possible. So, it depends on in which format they give the data for us to be able to match it to the donors. Absolutely. And the Absolutely. It all depends on which format they provide and if at all they provide in this format like one number for the purchaser when they uh, sold it next to the name and the beneficiary when they went to redeem it and the number. Tell us something, the entire premise of electoral bonds was the fact that the identity of the donors is going to remain anonymous. Won't it be a breach of that promise if the alphanumeric data comes out, especially for the donors who trusted the scheme for its anonymity? So, the court actually spoke about it yesterday in the hearing day before uh, whenever it happened. Uh, so, the court said that while after the first interim order was passed in 2019, it was obvious that the donor's name will not be rem uh, remained as anonymous because in that interim order, the court said all political parties to disclose the names of their donors and submit it to the EC, that data is already out. So, that time itself, it was obvious that probably it, uh, the scheme will not be the way it is. So, taking that as the ground, court said that we are not going to ask for the data prior to that because the scheme was launched on this basis, the anonymity. But now that the entry order is there from 2019 onwards, we are in a position and we are asking for all the details. Poonam, one very important question that lots of people are asking. What do you think publishing of this data will achieve? Or let me frame it this way. Who do you think it will affect more, the parties or the donors? <laughs> <laughs> it's a tricky question. Very tricky question. Yeah, and even you are laughing because <laughs> <laughs> you know that it's a it's a it's a question where we always we know for a fact that nothing is easy in the current situation. And uh, right now, um, whatever data we have and reports have been done, multiple reports have come out on the companies and the shell companies and the quid pro quo and the corruption, but anything and everything needs some concrete holding because this we can, as a journalist, we can report on it based on the documents. But for a right conclusion, which is justice, whether people who are part of the corruption 
whether people who were part of the wrongdoing, they are booked or charged, that can only happen if the matter is properly investigated by investigating agencies. And that can happen only after the complete data is out. So, first thing first is the matching. Only after that, I feel that concrete and definite answers can be pulled out. And I, and uh, as uh, the, one of the practitioners in the court uh, from ADR, Jagdeep Chokar, he rightly said that uh, once all the documents are in public domain, the facts are in public domain, then it should go to the court. Somebody, someone will definitely go to the court, file a PIL and ask for court monitoring inquiry. That's all I can say. Who will get affected and who will not get affected is something I can't say. But definitely, proper investigation should happen and people who are were part of wrongdoings, they should be booked. So, we have already been able to establish certain patterns between the donors and the political parties so far with the data that has be already been made public. But once the alphanumeric data is out, the links might get clearer. So, stay on with the Quint for investigative stories and analysis of the donors and the political parties and the links between them. Become a member, support our journalism and support stories that matter.